Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks um, to, uh, to Dan for this unexpected opportunity. Thank you very much. And to the minister, thank you for being before committee. And thank you for your personal commitment to climate action. It's, it's evident and, and you know you have my deepest respect in knowing that you care and that when you say, quote, we cannot afford to wait, unquote, I, I think I, I firmly believe you mean it, which is why you know I'm very disappointed with this legislation. My first question is why in developing this legislation, it, it seems apparent that Environment Canada and Climate Change chose not to decide to study the Climate Accountability Acts of other countries, the UK, New Zealand, Denmark, and to do better than what they recommend. And in three places, I, I note the differences between those legislation that we don't start right away with a five year target with five years from when the legislation started as a milestone year. We don't include carbon budgets. We don't rely on an expert committee of expertise that reports to the whole parliament and actually sets those carbon budgets for the government. So th there must have been a decision not to look at the gold standard of Climate Accountability Act elsewhere in the world. And I wonder why not. Thank you uh, for the uh, series of questions and certainly thank you for your ongoing commitment to the climate issue, which I know is uh, very deeply felt. Um, so we did certainly look at all of the other relevant acts around the world, um, and we came to conclusions that we were going to develop something that we felt fit best within the Canadian context. As you will know, we have established an expert panel. Um, the expert panel uh, is one piece of this. The, uh, the, the role for the Environment and, uh, Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development is another piece. Um, in some other jurisdictions, those roles are fused. But in, uh, in this case, the commissioner does the review and effectively the auditing of that function. The expert panel is appointed to provide advice to the government, which is public. It must be responded to by the minister. Um, every year. Uh, and so that piece of it is, we think, the gold standard in terms of how we actually are moving forward. With respect to other elements of the bill, certainly, as I say, we look very closely at those. We believe that actually setting five-year rolling targets um, that essentially embed in them emissions uh, relating to sectors is the right way to go in Canada, a federal system. Um, and, uh, and we believe that it is essentially uh, similar in terms of outcomes as to what you get from carbon budgets. And there are many other uh, countries, including Denmark and, and Scotland and others, that have gone the same direction that Canada has. But, but with all due respect, Mr. Minister, the, the bill refers to an advisory committee, not an expert committee. You've only got one climate scientist on the current. I mean, I do think it was disrespectful to this committee and the parliamentary process to jump the gun and appoint an advisory committee before the bill had had even a single witness to talk about why so many people and experts believe this should model ourselves much more on the UK Climate Committee, which is universally respected for its expertise. You've got one climate scientist on your advisory body and, and Professor Donner has been clear that Canada's climate target for 2030 should be, if we're gonna pull our fair share, um, somewhere between 96 and 99% reductions below the emissions today but he'll be surrounded by other stakeholders who have other views. So I, I, I wonder if you will reconsider the, um, the composition of this and more than the people on it, the structure of it to be much more like a UK expert body that sets carbon budgets. Thank you for the comment. Uh, I would say, uh, to be honest, um, I'm a little bit surprised at the comment because certainly the focus for us is actually on getting the expert panel working um, because the issue is so important and so timely. Um, and that is one of the reasons why we did move forward with it. Um, I would say that uh, achieving net zero is going to require the support and engagement from all parts of society. That includes provinces and territories, it includes indigenous peoples and youth and civil society and range of sectors within the private sector. We have launched an independent net zero advisory body that is filled with exceptional Canadians that bridge a wide range of experiences and expertise, including sectoral expertise, that will enable us to make the kind of progress that we need to make going forward. Um, and, and I can certainly go through the, the bios of the, of the people who are on that committee. They are an exceptional group of folks that bring together a range of perspectives from across the, uh, across the, the piece to ensure that the government is getting the best advice with respect to pathways to achieve net zero. But, but Mr. Minister, with all due respect, we know the only pathway to meet net zero, to meet and hold to 1.5 degrees, which is the goal of the Paris Agreement, net zero by 2050 is meaningless 
if we've blown the carbon budget to get to 1.5 degrees by 2030. And it's, you know, I've, I've, I've cited to you before in, the, in Parliament the very excellent description of carbon budgets from um, Mark Carney at page 273 of his book Values, so I won't read it out here. We're going to blow any chance of hitting 1.5 well before 2030, and, and everyone knows it, that to have an accountability, a process that involves massive consultations for every step, builds in delays that could defeat the whole purpose of ensuring that we meet our Paris target of holding to 1.5 degrees. Are you open to consideration of amendments to have the kind of robust expert body that the UK has had to hold to its Climate Accountability Act, which has worked? So, uh, first of all, I, I would correct you with respect to um, consultations that will require enormous uh, obligations that will impede um, progress. It does, require, it does require consultation. We do believe that actually Canadians want to have a voice in this. We do believe that industry and environmental organizations want to have a voice as we go through the process of establishing targets. That's important, and that is something that we have embedded in this legislation. We believe that this body, which has been set up with extremely thoughtful folks coming from across the spectrum, will provide the kind of advice that Canada needs to make the progress it needs to move going forward. As you saw, the Canada actually ratcheted significantly up its level of ambition recently at the Earth Summit alongside our partners. And we certainly are very sensitive, as will that body be, with respect to the guidance that is in this, uh, this act relating to needing to be guided by science that includes yeah. ensuring that one point five degrees in 2050 remains something that actually uh, is on the table. Good. 